Do the majority support the lockdowns? Let's have a look. Hello everyone, Florian Heiser here and welcome to another episode of Heiser Says. Grab your Stein of coffee and now as I'm recording this at 4.12pm, we're officially in lockdown in Queensland. Get your gas masks ready, everyone. So, do you think the majority of people support the lockdowns? Well, one of the websites I frequent, news.com.au, a conservative news website, well, looking at one of their polls, yes, they appear to. And if we look at a few other bits of information, it seems to be it's a popular opinion. I know the fact that I've got an argument against it on my channel. I'm seeing viewers reduced on or subscribers leave uh, because I have an opinion that they don't agree with. The fact that I understand why people might be protesting because they're concerned at their loss of liberty, their businesses being destroyed, their livelihoods being destroyed, the inability to travel from one state or another just to see a family member who may be sick or dying. Yeah, you know, the, the, those things need to be voiced. And there's a reason why people are angry and frustrated. But I think the majority, honestly, support the lockdowns. I think this is a minority opinion. Uh, well, let's have a look at another bit of evidence. One, I would say, is lockdowns win elections, everyone. Look at, all, look at every election we've had. Look at Andrews. Look at West Australia. Look at Queensland. Lockdowns win elections. And uh, it was when I was speaking to a neighbour, one who isn't isn't particularly politically active, isn't that involved. For the first time in her life, she went out of her way to ring up our Premier to say, thank you for keeping us safe. Don't fall for any of the bullying from the other Premiers. Lock the borders down. That's when I knew that uh, she'd come back in, if that could activate the base like that and that's why you've got a lot of people will be supportive of these lockdowns and these restrictions now this is an article live breaking news a frenzy as 11 queensland lgas are placed under a three-day lockdown and here you know there's rachel had to go shopping today because she did her what is it glucose test they make you do when you're pregnant and afterwards she went shopping it's the end of the month so she had to do her, her monthly shop and people were looking at her, she told me afterwards, people were looking at her like she's a freak. Because we've got a huge family, so she really piles it all on. And she, she, I think she was a little embarrassed. She only did half what she normally would do. <laughs> you can't blame her. And, of course, you know, I had a nap this afternoon. It was great. But if we look at this article, we look down here. Here's a poll. Uh, 10,109 votes. Are you in favor of COVID-19 lockdowns? 61% are yes and 39% are no of the readership of news.com, which is the third highest web visited website in Australia for the news after ABC News and Daily Mail. It's not uh, representative of the entire population in Australia, but I think it's a pretty accurate indicator, at least the conservative audience of this newspaper, guys. And here's the thing, there'll, there'll people going, oh, that's rubbish, I don't believe in any polls. People can game the polls too all the time. I don't know if you, this isn't a Twitter poll. Maybe you can bot this, I'm not sure. But the botting that's happened in the past, at least last year, was against the polls there. They could measure it. They could measure it because people were spending thousands of dollars getting bots to up the no vote. I mean, here the rule, the reasons we can leave. So no visit to, okay, no visitors to the home or places of worship are closed. No essential retail and businesses closed, including gyms, personal care, and entertainment venues. No professional sports. Weddings and funerals, only 10 people, and only takeout. Oh, luckily, we still have masks. There you go. Oh, schools are still open. Fantastic. You know, why wouldn't people be happy with this? Everyone. And what are some other data? This is from last year. Victoria in strong support of most stage four restrictions from August 27th from a Roy Morgan snap SMS poll and people would just dismiss it. Oh, it's not true. It's not true. Here's the thing, guys. You can't just dismiss these things if it's coming again and again and again. Or who are you talking to? Who are the people in your social circles? Who are the people on your social media circles that you're interacting with? Is it the danger that you're in a bubble? And if you just dismiss that you've got a majority of the population in support of these authoritarian restrictions on people's lives, 
you're going to ignore uh, opportunities to at least have a discussion and dialogue around it to highlight why people may be concerned, to highlight why people are protesting, why for a lot of people it was probably the first time ever in their life they went to a protest. So you can see here, you know, should Melbourne restaurants be allowed to trade per table? There you go. So, yeah. They, Victorians were in support of the lockdowns, at least back then. And we can see this on Twitter as well with all of the people who are, uh, you know, going, oh, Sydney, oh, Sydney, mocking the Sydneyites for not having a strict enough lockdown. Are we be becoming conditioned? Are we suffering from Stockholm sy Syndrome, everyone? Or are a lot of Australians in that situation? Don't think it can't happen. Here you go. 70% of Victorians approve of the way the Premier Andrews is handling his job. 76% say the government should compensate small businesses. This is in September last year. So it's going to be interesting to see the next round of elections, everyone. Who gets in? Remember, lockdowns win elections. And then we have the Sydney protest. Sydney anti-lockdown protest fears ease after no one turns up. When you can't blame people. Because of, you know, a thousand police, you, you may not want to get sick from the coppers, eh? It was a far cry from the wild scenes of last week. Instead of corralling large crowds, police horses today munched on grass in Sydney's Hyde Park. After the last sun Saturday's anti-lockdown protests saw thousands of people descend on the CBD, fears of a repeat fizzled this afternoon. By 1pm, the ABC had been unable to identify a single demonstrator at several central locations. Sydney siders have been warned for days there would be a large police presence in the Sydney. The exclusion zone had been set up around the CBD until 3 p.m., with roadblocks preventing access from many main arteries. A large group of police strolled the streets as a helicopter swooped over Darling Harbour this morning, where there were plenty of socially distanced exercises, but no demonstrators. Taxis and ride-sharing services were banned from picking up or dropping people off in the exclusion zone unless they were transporting someone for a medical emergency or an essential worker. Police also swarmed suburban train stations in an effort to stop people from heading into the CBD with any protester facing fines of up to $100,000. Dozens of officers from the riot squad and mounted police unit were at Hyde Park and Town Hall where last week's demonstration escalated. While people were allowed to walk through the iconic lawns, large groups were stopped and asked whether they were going uh, where they were going as a precaution. Officers from the dog squad were scouring the perimeter, and to Brook, uh, the police horse that was attacked by what was also oh oh the horse the horse uh, the the horse that the guy pushed out of the way. Come on, it's, it's a horse, guys. They're used in riot control. That they, they should they're, that's what they are. They're not pets. Okay, they're gonna get hurt. It's life. Come on. Yes, you know, at the end, horse doesn't get the retirement, everyone. It's like Animal Farm. Get sent to the glue factory, okay? That, that's it. Come on, kids. You got time your parents told you the truth. A woman who didn't want to be identified said she was pleased to see a large police presence. It's really great to see officers keeping the city safe. We all need to stay home and get this virus under control, she said. I think there are more people that have that opinion than you might realize. Now it's not the time to protest when people are dying from the Delta strain. I just want life to get back to normal and protesting will only cause the virus to spread. I just want life to get back to normal. How many people, how many of you have heard that from people? I don't, well, go back to normal. How many of you heard that from people? People are just getting exhausted. Key organizers and influencers who helped drive last week's protest warned their tens of thousands of followers to avoid gathering today. Anti-lockdown groups on Telegram, which the ABC chose not to name, said none of its known organizers had any plans for a Saturday protest. ABC found last week's rally was spearheaded by a German-based conspiracy group who also organized similar marches in Melbourne and Queensland. Messaging, including graphics, and instructions for protesters were then picked up by local anti-vax and anti-lockdown groups in New South Wales. The same German group organized worldwide freedom rallies in May, but made no official posts about any planned protests today. 
Earlier this week, people warned anyone planning to protest today they would be arrested and prosecuted. Police Commissioner Mick Fuller said police would start patrolling very early. The community has spoken about that behaviour. The Premier has spoken about that behaviour and it won't be tolerated again, he said. New South Wales police have so far charged 85 people and issued over 300 personal infringement notices to people who attended last weekend's unauthorised protest. Last night, a 49-year-old man from the Central Coast was charged with criminal offences related to the incitement of the protest. You just think about that. Okay? Welcome to Australia, everyone. So can you see why, why this result here isn't that shocking or surprising? As always, let me know your thoughts and opinions on this one, everyone. Uh, join me tonight for a live stream on YouTube, Twitch, and the Facebook, where we'll be going through watching the Prime Minister's press uh, press release about the plan out of all of this. And we'll sit down and have a look at that. Take care, guys. Thank you all for watching. Please like, share, and subscribe to the channel. If you're a fan and enjoy the content I create here, there are a few ways you can support us. You can join us on YouTube or Patreon, sign up for Self Wealth or Stake, use our affiliate links at Amazon, eBay, Independent Reserve, or Aussie Broadband, buy a merch from Heiser Says, use Gold Pass from the Perth Mint, or support us via PayPal. Take care, have a great day, and for those of you in lockdown, enjoy your weekend. Take care.